fresh off of finally booking my first cash of the 2021 WSOP. And yes, guys, I know I'm very far behind. I was excited to get into the double stack. Very similar structure to the monster. So let's just dive right into these hands. First level 100, 200, 200 blinds, 38K in my stack, just down a little bit from starting. The low jack makes it 600 and I call on the button with jack nine of diamonds. Standard defend for me here and the small mine calls as well. We go three ways to jack seven, six, flopping top pair, weak kicker. The low jack C bets 1.2K, repping a stronger hand, particularly when betting multi-way, but we can't release just yet. I make the call and so does the small blind. The turn's the king of diamonds, potentially an action killer or potentially a card that the low jack can rep. However, it checks to me and I decide to just check it back. Could potentially bet here to deny equity, but I don't think it's necessary. The river is the deuce of hearts. Low Jack bets 2.2k now, and I don't really love this spot. He's certainly repping only hands that are better than mine, but I'm not convinced people really bet second pair here often enough, and I think a king X would generally try to protect its equity on the turn. So I decided to make the call and the small line folds, but the low jack was getting thin here with queen jack, so he gets a nice value bet in there and I have to ship it over to him. In retrospect, I think this is really close and it probably is okay to fold in a live environment, although these multi-way spots are very tricky and it's sometimes hard to find the line. Most of my stronger hands in this I would have bet on the turn, so it's kind of hard to fold. In this next hand, 34k in the stack at the same blind level and the hijack makes it 600. I'm in the big blind with 10 deuce of diamonds and while this is a pretty ugly hand, uh, in this spot I'm going to be defending. I make the call. The flop also bails me out. King, 10, deuce with one diamond and two hearts. I check, he bits 700. And I decided to check raise here because it's a draw heavy board. I'll have plenty of bluffs and I expect the preflop raisers range to have pr plenty of connecting sorts of hands with this board. I make it 2.5K and he folds ace king face up. He tells me that nobody would muck that hand but him. I just chuckle and tell him that he's definitely right. Uh, kind of insane to have him get away, but what can I really do? In this next hand, 36k in the stack, and I'm in the small blind, it folds all the way around to me. Jack seven of spades is my hand, and while I could raise this, I like calling these sorts of middling holdings blind versus blind. I make the call, the big blind makes it 700, and I'm not limping this to limp fold, so I put in the call. The flop comes out nine, eight deuce with one spade, so there's a gut shot for me and a backdoor flush draw. I check. He bets 800 and I wouldn't mind check raising here. Uh, I think we can definitely get away with this because there's so many good turns for us to barrel on. However, I decided to just call here. On the turn, queen of clubs, I check again and he bets 1.6K. Um, this isn't the best spot in the world, but I think I can apply some pressure. So I decided to make it 5.5K. However, I'm drawing to only a gut shot. So this is a little bit dicey. It's definitely noteworthy though that Jack 10 already makes a straight. And so blocking that does make my hand a pretty good candidate for this. However, my opponent does make the call. The river is the ace of spades, bringing my flush draw too late. I can no longer make a flush and I have to decide whether to go for it here. Thinking about the types of hands he could likely hold, a lot of it's going to be one pair. Some queen x, sure, but a lot of that will be like queen x of hearts that decided to bet flop and queen x of spades, which I block pretty substantially. I also still block straights and I unblocked the front door flush draw. So I'm feeling pretty good about going for this backdoor flush draw combo that didn't come in on the turn, turning it into a bluff. I decide to bet 8K and he does fold. So we get one through, likely just got him off of something like a nine, maybe an eight. As you guys may know, I'm playing games on Club GG now. I'm joined by Greg Goes All In, Adam Rude, Branson Poker, and many others. And we run everything from PLO to bomb pots and meetup games galore. Info in the description down below if you'd like to play with us. At this point, guys, I just really got to be honest with you. The videos without footage from the tables really don't perform well on YouTube. And I have to start cutting out almost all of these hands from WSOP that just won't really get these videos viewed. I really want to share more of the hands with you and maybe I'll start sharing them as one-offs or on a different channel that is a little more analysis focused instead of kind of like being at the table focused. My inability to recreate these hands without footage just isn't getting the job done and I want to provide you guys the best of luck experience that I'm able to. So we're going to have to skip over a lot of hands for this specific tournament and then we'll have some more footage coming in the later ones as well as cash games as always. A lot of properties aren't really friendly toward tournament vlogging, so it kind of just is the name of the game, unfortunately, unless you're Rampage, who seems to get away with it everywhere. Anyway, the long story short of this bullet is that I end up dusting off a fair bit of chips 
bluffing in a three bet pot. It was probably a kind of close one, but I ended up losing and uh, kind of getting owned by my opponent, calling down with a very weak top pair uh, when I'm repping all the over pairs. Then there's this hand where there's an open and two calls, and I have queen jack of clubs in the small blind and 30 big blinds in my stack. I think this is a really good spot to squeeze. I have good equity even when called typically, and I can take it down here sometimes. If I do take it down, I'm adding like 15 to 20% to my stack here, maybe even a bit more. So it's a really big deal. I do go for the jam and the opener and the first caller somehow both call. The opener has ace queen and the caller has ace 10, which I think is way too light of a call, but so be it. I'm not drawing super live here, but the jack is and the clubs are as well. They don't have clubs covered at all. The board rolls out king seven, six with one club. So while it doesn't help me, it doesn't really hurt me either. Turn four of hearts doesn't bring any hope though and the river three of diamonds doesn't bail me out I bust. I also end up playing an entire second bullet, but that's not going to make it into this vlog for everything I just talked about. Uh, it doesn't have footage, and while there were some interesting hands, there weren't that many, so I don't really feel bad just omitting it. I did, however, end up firing a third bullet on the following day, so let's dive into a little bit of my mentality heading into that day, and then go from there. So, playing during the series, I think, is one of those interesting things where you are gonna bust a lot, and that's the expectation, or at least it should be, and most of us will not have sick runs early in the series, and most of us will actually be stuck in the mid parts of the series, even the good players, and you don't see a lot of that on social media. I've been trying to share it uh, as much as I can, but it does get a little demoralizing to just share the bust outs and whatnot. Um, I haven't, really been super specific about how bad my results have been so far but they've been pretty bad up until the monster stack of course that one I started documenting on Instagram I was mostly just uh, open about stuff in my discord about sort of like a lot being in for a lot of bullets and stuff like that um, but yeah it's it's tough man and I think that you really need to have hope it's kind of funny because I realized as I'm driving to the Rio today yesterday I made a couple of big errors that I think cost me my tournament um, certainly bullet one maybe also bullet two and but feeling so excited today feeling really pumped up and it's it's almost like one of the most important qualities i feel like for a tournament pro which i'm not really a tournament pro but i am effectively trying to be one during every world series and so i think this quality of uh being able to reset being able to sort of be hopeful about the next event uh, whether that's, you know, uh, a blessing or a curse is hard to say in the long run. Uh, but I think for something like the series is important to just be able to put aside yesterday and try to come in fresh. So that's what we're going to try to do today in the double stack. And um, yeah, hope to hope you guys get to sweat a lot with me. Well, I mentioned that I didn't want to make too much more content without actual vlog footage. I decided that for this one, I kind of had to. I think you'll see why. However, I've cut down a lot of the less interesting hands, mostly only the big ones from here on out. So stay tuned. In this hand, 200, 300, 300 blinds here, and I am already chipping up. I open kings to 800 in the low jack, and the small blind and the big blind both call. Flop comes down 9, 8, deuce. I see bet 1.2K and the big blind check raises to 3.5K after the small blind folds. I make the call, not really willing to give it up yet, and the turn is the five of hearts. He now bets 4.5K, leaving 18.5K behind. It doesn't really feel like he's gonna find too many folds here, and I'd like to deny equity to his draws. Technically 7-6 comes in, but besides that, there's still plenty of draws available and I'm not losing to too many hands. Even the hands I am losing to, it's pretty hard for me to get away from the river unless a bad action killing card comes out and I'm not really wanting to rely on that. So I jam. Feels pretty close, but he tanks for a really long time and just folds. Maybe he did have a draw, but something on the weaker side like Jack-10 or Queen-Jack. Not really sure, but we're chipping up here. 80k in the stack now, 300, 600, 600 blinds. And the hijack, who's an active and capable player who is from the king king hand that we just talked about, makes it 1.5k. I'm in the big blind and I have a6 offsuit. I make the call. Flop comes out ace high, ace queen seven two tone. I decide to check and I'm not really gonna have a leading raid range on this board ever. So when he bets 1.7k, I just make the call. Turn is the deuce of spades, bringing in a backdoor flush draw, two flush draws on board now. And when I check, 
check, he bets 3.5K, telling the story that he has a really strong hand here. However, I'm not really willing to get rid of an ace just yet. If he puts out a big bet on the river, I might have to release, but I'm not sure. I make the call now though, and the river's a queen of spades, bringing in the backdoor flush, as well as pairing the second card on the board. I check, and he now bets 8.5K. I'm really not so sure he would go this thin with many of his ace acts. I feel like he has plenty of hands that are just missed draws because the front door draw missed. And the fact that the ace is a spade on the board as well limits the number of flush draws that he can even have. On top of that, I don't think there's a whole lot of queen x that would realistically bet flop and turn. So I'm really starting to look at a very thin value range with a fair amount of available bluffs. I don't think my blockers are too relevant here. Maybe I'd rather not have the six of hearts, but c'est la vie, I don't think I can let this one go. I make the call and he announces king high, so I just show my hand and win. He most likely had king jack or king 10 for a straight draw or possibly something like king nine or king eight of hearts. Probably should have forced him to show this one since he's a capable player, but oh well. Chipping on up again, 501k, 1k blinds and 100k in the stacks was so still very healthy here with 100 bigs. Early position limps in, and it's a little bit hard to explain how he plays, but he pretty much 5x's it with his big pairs, raises small and folds to 3 bets sometimes, probably with a weaker part of his range, and then does a fair bit of limping as well. I have black pocket sexes next to act, and I bump it up to 3.5k, not really wanting to see a super multi-way limped pot. He makes a call, and we go heads up to a flop of 5-4 deuce. He checks. I decide to see bet 3k, wanting to protect my equity here, but he surprised has been by jamming 28.6k massive shove here and this is not a comfortable spot he definitely has hands like sevens eights nines in range at least at some frequency but he's also got flush draws and hands like pocket threes the sets loom large as well though so i'm not feeling very comfortable but with my gut shot to back me up and not blocking flush draws in the slightest i decide i have to call it helps that just looking at the guy, he doesn't seem that strong, but it's still unnerving to be in a spot like this for a massive portion of our stack. However, he turns over pocket threes. Insanity. We are in absolutely insane good shape here to stack him. The turn is a three of hearts, giving him a set, but it gives me a straight absolute drama card because he can still hit a full house and the river is the king of hearts, so I win this massive pot. At this level, this sort of pot means a lot. Even though we won that big one, I've played several hands in between and have chipped back down. There's a couple tough players at my table now. 130k in the stack. This hand is blind versus blind with Mike Martyr, who, if you don't know him, is kind of like an East Coast reg. Uh, very solid. I think I've played with him at Maryland Live probably like a half dozen times, and I'm in the small blind. I have 8-3 offsuit, and while this is a really, really trashy hand, a lot of times what I'll do in this position is open my really, really weak hands and my really, really good hands, and then limp call or limp raise some hands in between. I make it 3k, and Martyr calls in the big blind with around 40k to start the hand. The flop comes out 3-3 three, three deuce. This is just a miracle. Miracle flop for me. I decide to see bet small, 1.5k, and he makes the call. The turn is the five of hearts, and I feel like while I still have some of the strongest over pairs that he can't hold, a lot of my range will just want to check here and maybe realize some equity. So I decide to check, he bets 8k, and I happily make the call, not wanting to blow him off of bluffs. He's too capable of a player, and there's just too few strong holdings for anybody to have here. I don't want a check raise. On a river jack of diamonds, I check, and he jams 29k. I just can't fold this spot. Uh, yes, he's repping hands that beat me for the most part, and yes, there are a number of ones that do, but... It just doesn't matter. I say you're too good for me to fold. I call. And he has queen seven. So pretty interesting one where we both had relatively sort of garbage hands to start. And I just got super lucky to, you know, find the right player, find the right flop and kind of play it in a way where he was willing to stack off and put me to the test. To his credit, if I'd had anything significantly weaker, this would have been an incredibly tough spot to be in. And I probably would have found myself folding a little bit too often. So chipping up and chipping up, 215k in the stack now, 600, 1200, 1200 blinds. Middle position opens to 2.5k, the button flats with around 55 to 60k behind. 
and I have Queen Nine of Hearts in the big blind and happily overcall. The flop comes nine, eight, six with two hearts, so the insanity of flops continues. I check, middle position checks, and the button bets 5K. I decide that this hand is a little too good. I can actually get action against better and worse flush draws, as well as other one pair holdings, so I decide to check raise 18.5K trying to push my equity advantage wherever it may be. Middle position folds and the button just jams. I obviously have to snap here, but he actually has eight six of diamonds, so it's definitely close. Uh, I might technically be a very slight equity favorite, but it's really close to a flip. The turn is the five of hearts, immediately giving me a flush, and his only hope now is four outs to a full house. The river does not pair the board. It's another heart, the king of hearts, and I managed to chip up once again. After this hand, I'm 279k in the stack on break, and it looks like I'm likely chip leading looking around the other tables. Turns out that on the break I am, and I even end up getting asked to do an interview with Poker News, which is one of the highlights of my series. It was a really tough series for me, so ending up having this cool experience was awesome. I'll leave a link to the full thing in the description down below. 1K, 2K, 2K blinds now, and 260K in the stack, so still staying above that 100 big blind level. I'm under the gun plus one with pocket sixes, and I open to 4.5K. The small blind is the only caller, so we go heads up to a flop of 843 two tone. He checks. I decide to see bit 4K, pretty much because I'll do that with most of my range here, and he makes it 18K. I don't really think we can fold just yet. It's a board where people are allowed to sort of check raise top pairs from a theory perspective, but a lot of live players don't do this at a very high frequency, and there's so many draws available, I'm happy to continue. On a turn four of clubs, he rips 55k. Now it's really not a fun spot to be in, but looking at him, he just seems super nervous. I mean, this stuff is hard to quantify sometimes, guys, but I felt pretty confident. Granted, he can have something like diamonds with two overs where it's not like I'm a lock to win the hand, but I do decide to make the call, and somehow he has pocket fives. I'm in absolutely insane shape here, and on a river four of hearts, I win, chipping up substantially and continuing my chip lead of this event. Over the next several levels, I don't really chip up enough to maintain chip lead status, but I'm definitely near the top of the leaderboard as we move on through the night. 380k in my stack now at the same blind level, and it's basically one of the last levels of the night, if not the last one. Early position opens to 6k off of about 100k, the hijack calls, and the small blind jams 45k. I look down at pocket kings in the big blind. I look around and I'm thinking to myself, man, early position opener looks just so strong. He's breathing super hard. He seems really interested in the fact that the small mind has jammed. And at this point, uh, you know, he's got another more than 50K on top of what small mind has. It really, really feels like early position has aces. But what if I'm wrong? What if he just has queens? I don't have enough info here. I haven't been at the table long enough. I don't feel confident, even though it really screams aces to me. I jam. I just, I just can't get away from it. He hems and he haws because the player behind him is still left to act. But it's so clear to me when he tanks, it's aces. I'm just waiting for the bad news. He does eventually stick it in. The last player does fold. And of course, early position has pocket aces. So I'm drawing to just two outs here or some weird straight draws. The big blind turns over ace king killing one of our outs immediately and pretty much signing a death sentence to our amazing stack. The flop rolls out 10, 5, 3, and it's just, oh man, it just feels so bad. Like you're just chip leading so much of the day. You're feeling so good, making so many good decisions, it feels like. And then you just get into the spot where you could have gotten away, where you could have. And you were so close to folding, but just couldn't find it. And then the turn is the king. The case king falls on the turn. I just, this is such an insane turnaround. You couldn't have scripted it. There is only one card in the deck that could kill my pocket kings and this set, it doesn't fall. It's a brick on the river. Someone later told me that he folded the last ace in the deck and we 
end the day with 545,500 chips. Not the top of the leaderboard, but an insane stack, an insane run up on this day one after running so bad, so much of the series. And then these last two bullets not really going my way, trying to make another deep run like I did in the monster stack. And we're on our way here at the end of day one. What is even happening? I truly don't understand it. 545,000 and 500 in the bag. How is that even possible? I mean, I understand some people bag more than me, but I mean, just everything had to go right. Everything had to go right. Now, granted, nobody had a big stack at my table. That's what would have propelled me to like 700 or whatever. But like basically everything went right. Couple Lost a few hands at my new table to one guy and then won every single other hand, essentially. I got some through, you know, my table mostly wasn't fighting. That was good. That helped me kind of like recover when I did lose a couple hands, but just winning the Kings against aces and also like feeling like he had aces, but then still feeling like I had to get it in. Cause like maybe I'm wrong and he has Queens and then being right, but then banking it. I mean, I was just resigned. I was like, well, I'm going to bag, you know, like 280 and that's still great. <laughs> and then basically 550. Oh man, I don't, I can't, I don't, I have no words. I, I'll see you, I'll see you tomorrow.